All right, forecasting snow. It's not as simple as you think. It's not just a matter of where's the logo. It's a matter also of temperature because I want you to understand that in the atmosphere we have, basically think of the atmosphere as a bucket of water. And that amount of water is basically going to be dropped as rain or snow or something else. And so we have to determine how much of that bucket of water is gonna fall as snow, but it's not as simple as just how much water vapor, or we call it precipitable water, is up there in the atmosphere. What we have to do is determine the ratio of water to snow based on the temperature. So let's say today we're, we have seven tenths, let's just say seven tenths of an inch of what we call precipital water, water vapor up there that can be turned into snow. Now we have temperatures like we have today, that would be 28 to 34 degrees, that seven tenths of an inch of snow, it would be a one to 10 ratio and that would be seven inches of snow. Okay, but let's say the temperature was in the 20s, basically 20 to 27 degrees. That same amount of water, water vapor up there, would then fall as 10 and a half inches of snow. Get into the teens now, 15 to 19 degrees, that would be 14 inches of snow. Now you get to the lower teens, that would be 21 inches of snow, and then on down. So if you're in the single digits and you have seven tenths of an inch of moisture that's gonna fall as snow, that would be 28 inches of snow compared to seven inches if we had today's temperatures. So that's what we also have to determine is the ratio of liquid to snow. And by the way, the colder the temperature is, again, the reason that snow amount goes up, it's a fluffier, drier snow. So the colder the temperature, the fluffier the snow is. That's the type of snow you can broom off or use even a snow blower to blow it off your driveway. And that's great skiing. They call it powder for the skiers. But then the warmer the temperature, the wetter the snow is, the heavier the snow is, that's great for making your snowballs, your snowmen, etc. All right, let's talk about the lake effect component. We just talked about that with the possibility from Lake Huron, so let's explain that. All right, we have the open lakes. They are not frozen right now, there are open areas. So let's say you have warm water in the say 34, 35 degree range, and let's say it's in the 20s inland. Let's just take that as just a, a routine example. So the air has to obviously flow over that warm water. It, the water does two things, it warms the air, and it also, there's moisture that comes off that lake into the air. So what happens is as that air gets close to land and then travels over the land, two things happen. First of all, it cools. So that moisture that it picked up, you have to squeeze that out. That's squeezed out as snow. But also what happens is when that air hits land, it's coming off the relatively smooth water and it's coming onto land, which is you have rough terrain. You have you have know, buildings and uh, you have trees and you have uh, hills and things like that. So that causes lift because the air hits the land, it kind of has to slow down a bit. And so when you have that air rushing in, but now it's slowing down, it's forced upward. Upward motion gives you clouds, upward motion gives you storms and snow and things like that. So that's what happens with lake effect snow. And again, we would be in a pretty good setup if it was colder for our Lake Huron counties. But I think because of the temperature difference not being as great between the lake and the land, will get some lake effect, but not one of those big, you know, uh, big massive lake effect storms. All right, we still have some more snow to talk about after this storm. So here's Friday, one of those little clipper systems comes through and that could be uh, some accumulation. We're not talking about massive amounts, but we're talking about there could be some accumulation. And it looks like the model's even trying to suggest a bit of a lake band developing off of Lake Michigan. And then as we get into Saturday, we get a bit of a break, but then late in the day, another little system comes through and that could give us, you know, perhaps a few inches of snow. And then as we get into Sunday, maybe a bit of a break later Sunday, and then that moves out and another system could give us a few inches of snow.